No, nothing else triggers infinite human demand. Not gold, not fiat, not even sex. There's only one thing that triggers infinite human demand, and that is Bitcoin. That's why it's going to continue to go up, because humans, it's insatiable. They can never, ever get enough Bitcoin. Just look at Michael Saylor. Just look at Michael Saylor. I see him shaking down kids at the schoolyard to get their Bitcoin. He's like, kid, give me your lunch money. I want to buy more Bitcoin. You know, the guy is out there committing petty larceny so he can get more money to buy Bitcoin. He's become a Bitcoin addict. You he know, needs to go to Bitcoin Anonymous. For, for me, um, I, I think, you know, my, my journey was a, a little bit longer just because at, in the early days, so we were at that first Bitcoin conference and it was like all of the, you know, the autistic sort of coders, like they were all coders, tech guys, hackers. And for the first few years, I thought more of Bitcoin as like it was a technology and the people like Mike Hearn and Gavin Andreessen when they're rage quitting, like that this might, that, that this is a technology and all the technologists, the coders are abandoning it. And that to me was like, I, I didn't realize just that, you know, like with um, Nick Batia's book, Layered Money, that this was the third ever um, layer one money. Like I didn't understand, like it was money, it wasn't technology at that time. So, and that really only like totally solidified for me, like completely. And uh, March of 2020, during the pandemic, when remember when Bitcoin fell down to 3,000, but uh, the money printing and the extraordinary lockdown of the global economy, it just like th something happened. That you see that in the entire Bitcoin community, by the way. Not only did it that moment bring in the likes of Paul Tudor Jones, who's one of the smartest hedge fund managers out there, but also Michael Saylor was drawn into Bitcoin at that time. So there was, there, like we skipped like into another dimension at that moment, something, something happened. And it also happened for me. I mean, obviously I was like already well, a Bitcoiner and a maximalist, but yeah. there was like no going back. There was like zero doubt and all doubt was removed from my mind that any, that this had anything to do with technology, that it was just pure money. Yeah, well, I think at around block 300,000, Bitcoin became self-aware. And what Stacy is commenting on is that she started to understand Bitcoin as a living organism, and it spoke to her. True, true.